Welcome to Lenny's Place, brought to you by Hillendale Stallions. Breeding season is right around the corner. Be sure to check out the exciting new sires out at Hillendale. How important is a racetrack announcer? Well, nearly 25 years ago, while living in Los Angeles, I happened across Trevor Denman, who each night on an obscure VHF TV station hosted a replay show of that day's races. His race calls were so good and so entertaining, that show became must-see TV for me every night. And it also became a big reason why I sought out a life in horse racing. Trevor Denman was just that good. He announced his retirement from Santa Anita last week after 33 years. He will still call Del Mar. Personally, I'd like to thank him for his service to horse racing. He's done it with class, talent, and kindness, and I'm quite sure he's created many more fans in addition to myself. And I'd say that's pretty damn important. Our thoughts go out to the connections of Shared Belief, who died suddenly last week after a colic episode. These animals, even the great ones, are so fragile, and the hurt runs deep when we lose one like Shared Belief. It's just a terrible loss for those closest to him, as well as for us fans and the sport as a whole. Robert Evans is a gentleman, a sportsman whose family has bred and raised fine thoroughbreds for decades. After his Belmont winner Tonalus won the Cigar Mile last week, Evans was asked about retiring the four-year-old Tonalus to stud. Here's what he had to say, quote, I think we will keep racing. There is no reason not to. Some people think this game is about trading horses. Everybody is in it to trade, sell, and promote. But it's actually about racehorses. You're trying to make racehorses, and Tonalist is a racehorse, unquote. I think those thoughts by Mr. Evans point out very clearly why we don't have enough like him and why horse racing is not as great a game as it used to be. All right, very exciting day joining me now. You know him from everywhere, from NBC, from Axis TV. He covers horse racing, he covers boxing, he covers curling, kayaking, he spans the glove, and most importantly, he knows Ronda Rousey personally, yes. Mr. Kenny Rice. Welcome to Lenny's Place. Lenny. I love the place. I love you. It's great to be back. <laughs> you love what we've done with this. I love, I love yeah. it. I, and I do know her. I do know Rhonda. And it was funny. At the, at, I, I go in before the Haskell. Rhonda, first name. And yeah. I walk down into the paddock before the Haskell. And I'm going to interview Bob Baffert, of course. And I'm going to interview Ahmed and Justin Zayat. And uh, the first thing Bob says to me, I mean, they're all obviously a little anxious, you know. First race after the Triple Crown. He says, hey, what about Rousey's fight last night? Because that's when she'd gone to Brazil and won a big fight. So there. there you go. See, it all, my world's all come together. You, uh, they you, all come together. You have it all going on. Before going nationwide, uh, for the folks that don't know, Kenny's a native of Kentucky and made his bones actually in Lexington as a uh, sports anchor, one of the network affiliates here. I want to ask you, Kenny, as a native, longtime Kentuckian, tell me about your reaction to the Breeders' Cup at Keeneland how you think it came off, and also what it meant to, to this area, to the Lexington area. You know, Lenny, the only thing I could relate it to uh, was the 1985 Final Four, which had one of the great games of all time when Villanova upset Georgetown. Yeah. But that was, uh, uh, St. John's was also in that in Memphis, but you had the three Big East teams as they were at that time. Yeah. So you had all that uh, national attention coming from the big markets, you know, from New York and Philly and D.C. were all in. And there was a lot of buzz back then. Now, most people are dead now. They don't even remember that. So, so when the Breeders' Cup comes along, uh, it, it, to me, it felt like a, a lot of the same. The national attention, uh, the state and city pride. And I thought Keeneland did a great job. Yeah. I mean, they, they really did. It's not a hype. I don't work for them. I, you know, it's, but they did a great job. But, you know, you just knew they would. Yeah. Because it, 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 this is the first time it's come home. You know, and it really means a lot more here, I think, than, than any other place. I think the other places, particularly Santa Anita, 
They do a, a great job of embracing it. Uh, but here it was special because it's the only time, and I think they got a good shot at coming back, but at this stage it's the only time where everybody came home. You know, most of the horses were bred within like 20 yeah, miles. Yeah. Most of the owners, the ties, uh, were, were all pretty close. So I, I think that's what it, what it meant to everybody else. You know, to me, I, I thought it went great, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm just going back and forth from the barn area into yeah, the paddock. I'm yeah. not dealing with all the traffic elsewhere. But everybody seems to think, I will say this, I got out of there and was back in my house 30 minutes after the race. <laughs> right. Now, on a regular day at Keeneland, I can't do that. <laughs> that's right. So the bus system worked apparently because that's all I can judge that's it by. Right. I got in a car, I drive out, I go out the front, I hit Versailles Road or Versailles, as I kept telling everybody to pronounce it, that came in from out of state. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm home in 30 minutes. So from yeah. that part, I thought it was great. It beats the red, red eye out of L.A. <laughs> no uh, red eyes. Saturday no. night at midnight, it, that's it's a for first sure. time. It's the first time that I've actually worked. Now, I've been home for a week. But it's the first time I actually got paid money, worked, and been home for an entire week uh, since I left local TV 16 years ago. Yeah, yes, good so that was nice. And that was Eddie Pinkney's the Villanova team, wasn't it? That was. All right, just, that was. just showing you how but, old I am. No, I, <laughs> look at me. Look at me. I was there, and uh, you know, I mean, that was that was a huge deal. You know, it was, it was one of the last times, not the last time, but one of the last times I actually had it in an arena, because that's you know right, they started sure. moving everything then sure. to the to the super that's domes right. and all those. That's right. Now, great stories came out of Breeders' Cup. Every race had a great story in it, but the best story that I heard at Breeders' Cup was Kenny Rice talking about Gary Busey in a hotel lobby in Tulsa, Oklahoma, walking around in his bathrobe. Please, you, you, you gotta hit me with that. Gary Busey had the do not disturb sign on his door for 10 straight days. A hotel employee goes up and knocks to make sure he's alive, yeah, right? Right. Pick it up from there. What happened? I was in Tulsa because that was back in the old days of ESPN doing Today at the Races. And that's where we did the show from there. And so I walk in to check in as I did probably about every other week, you know, for about a five-month week, a five month period. And I look over this close. There's Gary Busey. So I look over and I said, man, I got to tell you, because I don't really in say In a bathroom. In a bathroom. <laughs> So that's, you know, the whole thing's pretty surreal to start with. I'm looking there and I'm looking around thinking, maybe we're filming a scene. I just walked into a Gary Busey movie by accident. Maybe it's some avant-garde thing there that that's what they want me to do, you know. So I did. I said, you know, like, I don't like to, you know, what am I supposed to say to actors when they say, oh, coming from you, thanks, Kenny. But I said, yeah, you know, Buddy Holly story still. That just blew me away, your whole performance. Thanks, man, you know. <laughs> And I said, and, and so, so you know, here comes the lady out to check us in at this time and says, you know, like, Mr. Busey, uh, uh, is everything okay? I put the do not disturb on because it means do not disturb. And they knocked on my door, and that's why I came down here. Well, you know, we just kind of wanted to check because it's been well over a week, and you know, like 10 days actually, and don't bother me when I'm in the room. I'm working because he was shooting some independent movie there at that time. And, you know, these are, these are my experiences that I love. Uh, and so I said, uh, so, so he said, there's a USA. You know how they have stacks of USA on the desk there at this double tree we're staying at. And he goes, uh, hey, can I have one of these papers? And I said, sure, man, you're Gary. You know, he kind of looks at me and asks me. I said, sure, you're Gary Busey. He looks at me and goes, I am Gary Busey. I said, you, you, you are. And then he's walking away. And he starts to walk away. He's still in the bathrobe, you know. And, <laughs> and he, he turns back to the clerk and goes, hey, you got any more of those, uh, those, 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 those cookies? Because, you know, they give you the little chocolate chip deals when you check in a double tree. She goes, yeah. So she comes back like this arm load, arm load of cookies, the chocolate chip, and he corrals them. And he's got this arm load of chocolate chip cookies, and he's got his USA Today tucked under his bathrobe. It's, a, it's and another he, 10 days right there. And, 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 don't, and remember, the do not disturb means do not disturb. And I look over and said, nice meeting you, Gary. And he goes, I am Gary Busey. <laughs> yes, you are. And, and then I realized actors are not like us. <laughs> not that one. <laughs> not that one. Not that one. Like you real. said, Gary Busey's known for two things, playing Buddy Holly and largely being insane. But all right. <laughs> let's, I love that story. Let's get back to horse racing. Um, we had a great story this year, obviously, at the Belmont Stakes. Very different from a year ago when you did the infamous Steve Coburn interview where he called people cheaters and cowards and said that no horse would ever win the Triple Crown in his lifetime. We checked, he is still alive. <laughs> this year, uh, being there was an incredible yeah. experience. What was your assignment and what was your feeling? 
you know, a as a fan, a apart from the assignment, when American Pharaoh won the Belmont Stakes in the Triple Crown. And I'm up there with Bob, and you know, the whole key is for me not to get in the shot, stay out of the picture until the last, till, till they need me. We're standing up there, there's the Burger King guy yeah. standing behind him. Yeah. So, <laughs> and only Bob could do this, which, which I think showed that possibly a little confidence, but, but I think that a little bit of uh, the humor was, was needed at that moment because you're anticipating, we're like two minutes out from the race, is this going to be history uh, or not? And I'm just thinking, just try to stay in the moment with him regardless of what happens here. So he looks over at me and says, hey, Kenny. And I'm thinking, oh, no, he's going to give me like a Joe Namath, look that up, Super Bowl three. He's going to guarantee, he's going to give me like, we got this or something. And I'm going to tell our producer in the truck, Rob Hyland, I'm going to tell him, hey, Bob just gave me this nugget. That's what's going through my head. But what he says is, did you think you'd see this at the Triple Crown? <laughs> and that's the Burger, Burger King, King guy. You know, and you look at that moment, you think this is like a Monty Python sketch. <laughs> and then, of course, after it happens, and we're all, you know, after it happens, I've never seen anything like it. Just the sustained roar of the crowd and the appreciation uh, for what they had just seen. And, the, you know, those that had tried to beat him coming over to immediately congratulate him, as many as could. But you know the, the scene there, Lenny, and, and for people that watching at home or if they haven't been there, it, it's a fairly narrow passageway yeah. uh, when you're coming from the box to get down to the track. Yeah. So I'm walking behind the camera and probably three or four boxes down, maybe five from where Baffert was sitting, Zayat family's sitting. So now they're coming out and everybody's trying to greet them. So suddenly we got this log jam and I'm literally in the middle of it all. You know, Bob's probably five, six feet away from him. I'm, I'm still waiting because, you know, we're, we're, and rightfully so, I thought, I thought the whole crew and our producer and everybody and, uh, and our announced team did a great job of letting the moment happen. You didn't need to say a whole lot. You can hear it and yeah. you can see it. And, and people that are generally, well, you know, very, we'll say very reserved, you know, maybe mild applause, are screaming and clapping and reaching out and just trying to touch Bob. Yeah. Just like, like a, yeah. it was like a mosh pit. Suddenly you're, at a, you're a kid again at a concert yeah. and people are just really just trying to pat him on the back just to touch him. But the whole focus was this, what are you thinking now? And that's all I wanted to know was, you know, what are you thinking? This, this is the moment that's been building and now you've done it. And, and then of course I asked him about his family and about his parents because I knew how special it would have been for them. And uh, you know, so that was trying to be the objective announcer uh, from a personal standpoint, uh, I was thrilled for Bob. Uh, I don't know if people, anybody deserves anything in life, me included, but when you see someone who's done so much for the sport and has been so successful that you feel, you know, that, that's the kind of guy that should win yeah. this Triple Crown. I mean, you know, he's one of the great trainers of all time and, it, it, you know, there's no fluke about this. All the best horses, some thought he was one of the best three-year-old classes in a long time. You know, he beat them all yeah. and, and he deserved it. And I thought uh, Ahmed and Justin, that they deserved it because, you know, they had made this uh, America horse thing. And, you know, people were coming by, you could come by and pet this horse. Yeah. You know, it's unheard of. Yeah. And, and so, you know, for all that point, it, it was really exciting. <clears throat> now you do, a kid, but you do move in a lot of different circles and a lot of different sports. Was there increased interest of people coming up to you and saying, hey, how about this horse? How about this horse racing? Well, yeah. did, did it increase? outside people's interest in the sport as it was going on? Or? Well, you know, I talked about Bob asking about Ronda Rousey's yeah. fight. I had people ask me about Bob Baffert that are in the boxing and MMA worlds mm -hmm. that I cover. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting texts afterwards, wow, you know, from these fighters, famous fighters, wow, what a horse, what a, what a race. Uh -huh. You know, that, that was a moment. Uh, you know, I could, I could feel it here. I mean, I'm sitting in California watching it on TV, and I, I could just get a sense of everything, uh, the, you know, the drama as it yeah. unfolded, you know. Yeah. They weren't that eloquent. They threw a few other things in, but you know yeah. that that was yeah. the gist. But yeah, I, I think that you know this was somebody that that uh, you know just captured the attention, and and people knew Bob. I think I think you know Bob and Wayne Lucas are probably the two most just looking. I'm talking about outside of the sports, outside yeah. of this world, okay, outside of horses, that a lot of people have seen them over the years, if nothing else, yeah. and, and they have a familiarity with them. And of course, Bob, you know, with the hair, white hair stands yeah. out. So a lot of people say, hey, what about Bob Baffert? Uh, uh, you know, again, these, these, these fighters are, are telling me, you know, wow, that, I was so happy. I so much wanted that horse to win. Uh, tell Bob Baffert hello. He doesn't even know these guys, yeah. but they feel like they know him. And, and so, yeah, I think that, you know, more than anything else, I did a basketball tournament Thanksgiving week in the Bahamas 
a couple of the coaches came over to me and said, hey, that American Pharaoh was some kind of horse, wasn't yeah. it? I watched the race. Because yeah. it was, what, 18 million or something like that yeah. tuned in? And, and I do think that it, it did as much for horse racing as anything I can remember in my lifetime of, of covering it now for over 30 years. Yeah. You know, I know I, you probably maybe had similar experiences. Yeah, absolutely. No, it was, a it, was a, it was a personal, you know, it's just, I've been to heavyweight championship fights. Yeah. I've been to World Series games. I'm not sure I've ever had a feeling like I could, could like, you believe like that crowd? had that day. Could you, know, you believe just, that crowd? It was, <laughs> wow, it just, I, you know, I don't know. To me, I had people say, how long do you think they applauded? I said, you know, where I was, it seemed like 15 minutes. I know that wasn't the time, but, you know, just waiting for the interview, trying to stay out of the way, jumping in at the right moment, trying to keep everybody away and trying to stay focused on, you know, not, not uh, suddenly blabbing as the fellow, well, wow, wait, great, man, you want it. Hey, dude, you want it, yeah, you know, which yeah. you kind of want to say. Yeah. Um, but I said, you know, it, it had to be three, four minutes, it seemed yeah, like no, to me. It was. It was. All right. Quick question, Gary Busey versus Ronda Rousey, who wins? First off, the, 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 the pre-fight talk would exceed anything. <laughs> it would be Ali-like <laughs> in his great days. If nothing else, I would pay just, I would actually pay to go to that press conference. I would take Rousey early on in an, in an arm bar unless Busey bit her. That would change things. <laughs> it certainly would. It would change her health, I'm sure. All right. <laughs> I want to thank the great Kenny Rice for dropping in. We want to thank you, viewers. We want to thank our friends at Hillendale Stallions. Uh, check out Curlin, Bayer, and all the great new sires over at Hillendale. We will be back with you next week. That's just one week from today with the next and last Lenny's Place of the season. Take care, everybody. See you then.